I'm Wendy Peeney, and today I'm going to draw a cutter for you. People are often surprised that I start without penciling the character first. But I've been doing this for 40 years, so I can pretty much do this character in my sleep. So let's get started. ElfQuest is a hero's journey, and since uh, Cutter is the hero of the story, it's really appropriate to draw him right now because we've come to the end of that journey for him in our final issue of Final Quest, which came out on February 28th. Just just very recently, 40 years to the day that we first released our first issue of ElfQuest. So Cutter has changed over the years. He started out as a very young character, maybe in his early 20s, and uh, no beard, <laughs> you know, very fresh-faced. And now he's a little bit rugged, a little bit more raggedy, and he's got some face fur. But that's the thing about ElfQuest, our characters evolve and change through the story. And uh, that's something we always intended for them. I think Cutter's hair really, really says a lot about him as a character because I always wanted him to have that rough, rugged, sort of unkempt barbarian quality. You can almost imagine that he has fleas. and. <laughs> And again, it's also partly the uh, influence from manga and anime because uh, those wonderful characters like Goku from Dragon Ball Z with the nutty big hair. Um, so big hair and big eyes uh, is really reflective of the Japanese influence in ElfQuest that's always been there from the very beginning. Cutter has a, a very definite silhouette. Uh, you know, people would People would recognize him if he was just uh, uh, like a black silhouette because uh, it's just so specific. And I like, to, I like to design all my characters that way. I like to give them really specific features, costumes, um, and, a, and a specific silhouette so uh, they're instantly recognizable. We have so many characters, it, it's kind of necessary. One of the distinctive features of Cutter is, is what we call the Chief's Lock, which I'm drawing right now. And this is, he's the only one in his tribe who can wear this. And it's a, it is a sign that he is uh, the Chief of Chiefs. He's descended from Chiefs and he is uh, the leader of the tribe. But that doesn't mean that he can't be challenged. And we've, we've done challenges in the story. Um, because the Wolf Riders are uh, a very free-spirited kind of people, and they don't uh, they don't go by rigid rules at all. I like to get the contours of his face uh, correct first, and uh, then then just uh, finish the outline. Uh, and it's important to me that, especially with Cutter that, uh, as you can see I'm doing right now, is, is sort of dynamic um, shapes uh, kind of framing him. He's a, he's a character of action, and so I like, to, I like to put shapes around him that appear to be almost in movement constantly, like as if the wind were constantly blowing him, because uh, he's just got a dynamic personality and um, I want to reflect that in both his clothing and, and in how he is drawn overall. One of the things that I learned from Jack Kirby was to um, vary the thickness of my lines because it gives, it gives a sense of weight and power, especially to a male character. If you have some very, very strong um, black outlines uh, in the character. And this seems to work well with Cutter, even though he's an elf and even though he has slightly androgynous features. So I've got, I've got the basic outline of the character now. I haven't done his, started on his facial features yet, but that's where I'm going. 
that's usually the final thing I do. And as I've I said, I, I've been doing these characters for so long that it's just very easy to draw them freehand without, without penciling them first. It kind of shocks some of my friends in the business when they watch me draw. Since I never really do much besides uh, like a, a headshot, uh, maybe to mid-breast, um, the pose is usually dictated by what kind of character it is. If I, if I have a happy-go-lucky character, like uh, one of our elves is named Pike, and he's, he's, he's one of our humorous characters, and he's always a little bit drunk. So I, I will pose him differently than, say, Cutter, who is uh, kind of staunch, and you know he's the leader. So I'll give him sort of a strong, uh, upright pose. But Pike, you know, I'll just kind of loosen him up and draw him like he's, like he's had a few too many dream berries. Cutter's eyebrows are quite heavy, but uh, quite often they're covered by his hair. And I, I like to just sort of hint at a facial expression that way. It's a trope in uh, Japanese manga uh, with characters that are called, well, the word is bishi. <laughs> and a bishi uh, it means uh, you know, a beautiful boy. So uh, most of my male elf characters are bishis. And bishis usually have their hair in their eyes because they're very emo. <laughs> Now, I didn't know all this when I first designed the characters uh, because I didn't know all the, all the manga speak, but I, but I learned it as I went along. In some circles, ElfQuest is considered to be uh, America's first manga, and I really like that. The eyes of the characters, the elf characters in uh, ElfQuest, are much larger than normal, so it's really important to keep them balanced because um, if they're out of balance, the character doesn't see, and it's, and it's much more exaggerated when the eyes are, are much larger than a normal human's. But I like to draw them in such a way that you have a sense that they're, they're big and liquid and sparkly. All right, so we've got, we've got Cutter's eyes now. Now I'm going to finish. Now I have to decide if he's going to be smiling or looking tough. But I think because this is our 40th anniversary with ElfQuest, and we just finished Final Quest. I think I'll have him smiling because he has every reason to. The story came to a good end, and so did he. And even after him, the story will go on. So when I get to the point that I've uh, that I've finished a drawing and got the the facial expression and pretty much got all the line work in. I like to go back and find certain parts of the drawing to, to, give, the, to give it a little more weight and uh, darken certain areas. And of course, he's, uh, he wears a, a gold metallic neck ring, and so I have to give that a little shine so that you know it's metal. Textures are really important. Um, when I design a costume for a character, I really give a lot of thought to how it would be made if it, if it were real world clothing. And so the textures are really important. All right, we're almost done. And I like to, set, I like to finish the drawing by setting the char character off with um, just a sense of background. just to add a little three-dimensionality to the piece. It's really a simple way to draw. There's, you know, there's nothing complicated about it. it. It definitely is cartooning, and I consider myself to be a cartoonist. But I like to add elements of illustration, like I've, I've mentioned the line of beauty before, and that's, that's actually an S-curve. I put a lot of S-curves into the drawing of the elves because it gives a sense of movement and, uh, and definitely it is, it is beautiful to the human eye. There's the last little touches and now I'm going to sign it. Boris Vallejo 
gave me some great advice many years ago. He said, be sure to develop a distinctive signature that's that, so that people can recognize it and know the work is really yours. And that was really helpful, and I did. And it has stood me in good stead for all these years. I am Wendy Peeney, and this is my character, Cutter. <laughs>